Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the Lights on Data show live here at IBM's Think. And I'm here with Alex Coleman. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> and you are the CIO and uh, the Associate Deputy Minister for the Ministry of Children, Community, and social services. Yes, correct. You got it right. It's quite a mouthful. It, it's quite a mouthful. <laughs> yes, yes. And it's part of the. It's also the I and IT cluster. Yes, as part of the Ontario Public Service. Yes. Well, that's quite a title <laughs> and quite the responsibility as well. <laughs> so I'm very curious, Alex. Already starting to look ahead. Mm -hmm. How do you see really AI? Everybody talks about AI, but how do you see AI having an impact on social services, on community services? and citizens' lives. Yes, thank you, thank you. So I would say that, um, you know, as, as the government, the Ontario Public Service, we are responsible for, what, 60 million Ontarians, right? Mm -hmm. Who live here. And so that's something that we take very seriously. And what this means is that we have the opportunity to transform the lives of the people. Their, their, their lives are improved for the better. Um, right. And, and, you know, we provide services for all the people in Ontario, right? So you can imagine, you know, the number of uh, healthcare um, calls that we get to our service Ontario. Yeah. You can imagine even other services that provide uh, for, um, or even when there's a fire, all these options, right? And in each of these areas, there's an opportunity to use artificial intelligence to make a difference. Now, when it comes to social services in particular, that's almost like one out of 10 Ontarians. But the difference there is that we are talking about the most vulnerable people in the society, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and unfortunately, quite a majority of them too are racialized people. So the question is, what do we have to do differently to close the gap? Because I think we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to close the gap between those that maybe are underprivileged and those who maybe are in a better status. Absolutely. And so this is what the government is looking at. How can we make things easier, right, for these people? And it starts with first, even with our services, being able to have a more efficient services. So using AI to look at different things, but also finding the right problems for AI to solve. That is the key. AI is not the solution to everything. You've got to find the right use case. And so finding getting good use cases where we can ensure that we use AI. One of them is, of course, social services, provision yeah. of services, yeah. um, looking at our, our spectrum of socially disabled people or different disabled people and looking at different interventions that we can do in yeah. that space. I like what yeah. you said, that AI is not the solution. It can be part of the yeah. solution, but in no way it's really replacing everything else that we have. Yeah but maybe it's only augmenting some of the services and bringing some of the efficiency, yeah. but in no way replacing. In some cases, you just need to do a process review and improve your processes, right? right? right. In some cases, maybe you need to upgrade your system. <laughs> but in, uh, when there's a good use case, yeah. right, where we are looking at things, we want to, want to, want to build ones yes. and reuse across the government, so right, to right. be efficient, right? right? So AI works well when it's got things where there's a lot of data. All right, so look at all our legislations and regulations. Mm -hmm. So lots of data there. So we say, okay, how can we use AI to make a difference? Large data sets, pulling them together to save time so that when someone calls in to say, I need help, it can take instead of 90 minutes, it can take five minutes to find the answer. Mm -hmm. That is efficiency. That's effectiveness. That is what will free our people to provide more services for Definitely. the people of Ontario. Definitely. And what do you think are maybe one or two of the public services and those areas that you think AI will be the most impactful? Um, I think one is even with our, our call center, right? Service Ontario, they have millions of calls every, every year. And I mean, it takes a lot of manpower, a lot of diligence to look through the legislations to find the answers. So that is where we implemented some kind of chatbot or virtual assistance to support the millions of calls will make a difference, right? so that we can handle more calls and take care of our people, right? Another aspect is even with uh, forest fires. We've seen large forest fires in Ontario over mm -hmm. the years, but using the AI capabilities which can match large data sets of the weather and different things and different data points, we can have better predictions and better uh, abilities to maybe forecast where these things right. can happen, right? The other aspect is actually, you know, taking care of the public pests. There are incidents of maybe fraud and other things that we have to make sure that we we are diligent on, right. and this uh, responsibility to take up the public pair. So, again, we can use this to uh, look at those other opportunities. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I, I love what I'm hearing. <laughs> I'm sold. Excellent. I need to move to Ontario. <laughs> yes, what are you waiting for? <laughs> you know, one of the challenges that I've seen working with some 
of the public agencies, governmental institutions, it's maybe the slower adoption mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. technology, AI, and in mm -hmm. some cases, it's rightfully so, because there's a lot of checks that you need to go yeah. through and make sure that yeah. things are properly deployed. Yeah. But even so, how would one ensure that AI strategy is done in such a way that it's trying to anticipate some of the future changes in technology, as well as the public needs? Yeah, uh, great question. So, you know, there was a lot of excitement around AI, and now we've reached kind of a place where we realize that, okay, like I said, AI, this generative AI is not the solution to everything. Right. We've got to find the right use cases, but we've also have to treat it just like any other technology. Find the right use case. Uh, make sure that you have a plan. Make sure you have the right governance for it. Make sure that you are, you are solving the right problem. Make sure that you are working with uh, your procurement people so that you get um, the right procurement. Make sure you're working with our unions so that we ensure that they understand that this is going to be a job aid for uh, the, the, our staff. It's not going to replace anyone, right? right. To make their work better. So you have a comprehensive approach to be able to implement this. And then also answering the questions and the fears that people have. We've got to also train our staff to be able to use AI effectively, right? Um, it's not easy to use. You've tried doing, giving different prompts mm -hmm. and you get different answers. So we've got to train people on how to use the right prompts to get the right answers, which means that you're talking about a huge change management for our staff, right? And even I ask other CIOs, how often do they use uh, Copilot? Apparently less than 25% of people use it on a daily basis. Right. So to change, you know, 65,000 people to use this on a daily basis, it's a huge task. Oh, definitely. But it's something that we have to work towards by putting all the guardrails. Also changing our policies. Policies are the beginning of everything, right? To make sure that it's trustworthy, right? It is also used in a, um, a way that is sensitive, a way that, uh, of course, will be transparent to the, to the public. Definitely. And people can have, figure out if you use AI to produce a result, ensure that they can ask questions about it, right? Definitely. But the one thing I'll say in addition to that is ensuring that the staff always are involved in the final outputs. So AI doesn't make any uh, rulings or determinations. It provides the information to the staff. Yes. And the human being has a final say. That is so critical in whatever we're doing, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for <laughs> being on the Lights on Data show and putting the lights on AI in the yeah. public sector yeah. and all of your inspiring messages. Yeah. Really appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You so Good much. to see you. Okay. Likewise. Yeah.